Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So friends, uh, till now we have seen the overview or the basics of LGIP engine. Now let's see how do we start these engines into dual fuel mode. So basically, in this video we will see the whole operation of changeover of this LGIP engine from primary fuel to secondary fuel. So let's begin with the video. So friends, uh, before we begin with this uh, starting procedure or the change of procedure of this uh, LGIP engine from primary fuel to secondary fuel, let's first uh, understand how the combustion uh, takes place in the combustion chamber or how basically the LPG is burned in the combustion chamber. So before, uh, so for that, uh, basically this engines uh, run in the primary fuel and second is the second mode is the dual fuel mode. So in the primary fuel mode, what what happens? It is running no, like a normal ME engine. Okay. So when these engines are running like a normal ME engine, then uh, I think that is clear. Uh, they are uh, burning normal uh, fuel oil uh, in the engine and they are running like a normal ME engine. But in dual fuel engine, they require a small amount of normal fuel plus LPG. Okay. So this normal uh, fuel which is there which is uh, used in uh, for the operation of the engine in the uh, primary mode so this fuel over here the quantity of this fuel is very less only only five percent so this five percent uh, normal fuel is basically called the pilot fuel so for the operation of these engines in the dual fuel mode they basically required pilot fuel of five percent plus 95 percent lpg so now the question comes why this uh, engines require pilot fuel not uh, why can't they uh, use only LPG. So the answer is that uh, the LPG basically have high auto ignition temperature it is around 550 to 600 degrees Celsius and even more because this LPG uh, is not 99.9% .9 pure. So uh, its auto ignition temperature will also vary but it is very high. So, uh, it cannot ignite in the combustion chamber automatically uh, because the compression the temperature is not that high. So, for that purpose, so basically for igniting this LPG in the combustion chamber, a small amount of pilot fuel is injected so that this LPG which is injected in the combustion chamber can be ignited. So, this uh, pilot fuel basically acts as a spark plug you can say as it is used in the petrol engines. So, this pilot fuel is uh, needed for the operation of this uh, LGIP engine into dual fuel mode. So that is the basics of uh, operation of these uh, LGIP engine into dual fuel mode. Now if you have understand, uh, understood this one then uh, it will be very easy for you to understand like uh, for starting purpose we cannot use this uh, dual fuel mode because uh, this LPG will not uh, ignite in the combustion chamber and even if it ignites then there will be a lot of knocking sounds and there may be damage so for starting purpose only primary fuel mode is used similarly for stopping purpose also the primary fuel mode is used now next is the uh, loading up process basically uh, for operation of this dual fuel mode uh, we require a minimum of 20 percent fuel index so if this fuel index is not there, basically minimum load is required for the operation of this dual fuel index for avoiding knocking and damage to the engine. So uh, first the engine is started, then uh, the minimum fuel index is achieved that is about 20%. Then after that we will be able to change over this, uh, primary, uh, this LGIP engine from primary mode to secondary uh, mode. So this uh, makes it very clear that even during slow steaming also the operation of this uh, dual fuel engine or this LGIP engine is not possible in the dual fuel mode. And for man maneuvering purpose, so in the maneuvering engine is basically started, stopped, again reverse back, uh, sorry uh, direction, is, uh, engine is run in the reverse direction. So for all these purpose uh, LPG uh, or this dual fuel mode cannot be used. So hope this is clear that why on uh, this uh, this uh, these lgip engines this dual fuel is mode is used only when rfa is given okay rfa to end of c passage so during this passage this dual fuel mode of this lgip engine is used 
uh, before this manoring is there and after end of C passage manoring is there. So in that case also this uh, dual fuel uh, mode of this SGIP engine cannot be used. And I have told you the reason is that the uh, LPG have a very high uh, auto ignition temperature. So this cannot be ignited and uh, uh, during uh, slow steaming and uh, when the load is less at that time the compression temperature will be uh, very less. So at that time LPG would ignite and even if it ignites then there will be lot of knocking sound and there, there are chances that the engine can get damaged. So for that purpose this dual fuel mode is only operated when the RFA is given and uh, after RFA till end of C passage this dual fuel mode operation is possible for this LGIP engines. So now let's uh, if this is clear then let's go and uh, start the starting procedure or basically the change over procedure from the uh, for, for this LGIP engine uh, from primary, to primary fuel to secondary fuel. So for, uh, for so uh, now I, now we can assume that the main engine is basically running on primary fuel and have a minimum fuel index. So basically it is ready for the changeover. So when main engine is ready for the changeover, so for uh, uh, then we can go and we can start the auxiliaries that are needed for the operation of this uh, main engine into dual fuel mode. So let's go and start first start the auxiliaries then try to change over the main engine from primary fuel to secondary fuel. So let's uh, begin with the starting procedure or the change over procedure. So the first auxiliary that need to be started is this nitrogen generator. So the nitrogen generator is basically operated in the auto mode. So we have to just go and put this nitrogen generator in the auto mode. Mostly, mostly it is always kept in the auto mode. So now what happens when the engine started nitrogen is needed. So basically nitrogen is needed at three places. So let's cover the places one by one. So first let's see the overview of the nitrogen generator. So as you can see over here. So these are the feed air compressors. So over here the air is basically compressed to at around 10 bar. Then from this 10 bar air is basically passed through this nitrogen generator. So this is the nitrogen generator. This 10 bar air is passed to this nitrogen generator and the nitrogen is produced in this nitrogen generator. So the produced nitrogen is basically stored in this tank. So this tank is there. So nitrogen at around 10 bar is stored in this tank. So from this tank basically the 10 bar nitrogen is supplied for the HP pump seal support system. So one thing is seal support system, HP pump seal support system. That is the first thing where the nitrogen is needed for the operation of this uh, FGSS uh, HP pump. Then what happens? Uh, we have a booster compressor. So this booster compressor is there. This basically takes suction from this bottle of 10 bar and this compresses it to around 300 bars. Okay, so the nitrogen at 10 bar is compressed by this booster compressor. To 300 bars and it is stored in the N2 bottle rack. So uh, many bottles are there. So in that bottles uh, this nitrogen is uh, compressed to at around 300 bar and it is stored and basically ready for the operation. The, uh, <coughs> this 300 bar nitrogen is then reduced to at, ar at around 30 bar or 32 bar. So basically one connection is going to the fuel wall train. So fuel wall train basically uh, the supply fuel wall train for the uh, pressure testing and purging operation of this uh, LGIP engine or basically the uh, double wall pipe. So the 34 bar nitrogen connection is there at the supply fuel wall train for the uh, purging and the pressure testing and uh, 30, 32 bar uh, 32 bar connection is provided onto the catch tank. So if you remember my FGSS video in that I have covered a catch tank. Catch tank is there. So that basically acts as a hydrophore. So 32 bar nitrogen is provided in the catch tank. So in the catch tank what, what is there? In the catch tank small amount of LPG is there. Not small amount. Uh, level of LPG is maintained in this catch tank and uh, on the upper part uh, nitrogen at around 32 bar is maintained. So this uh, cash tank basically provides a positive suction head for this HP pump. So this HP pump is there. So for that purpose, uh, this uh, nitrogen at 32 bar is provided so that this pump uh, have a positive suction head. 
So three places where the nitrogen is used is HP pump, see the support system, then the at, at the fuel wall train, that is the supply fuel wall train for the purging and the pressure testing, and uh, at the uh, in uh, if it is its connection provided on the cash tank for providing the uh, positive suction head for this HP pumps. So three places are there. And there is one more connection also that is used for basically maintenance purpose for uh, carrying out the uh, cleaning of the filter. So for that purpose, we need a purging uh, nitrogen. So for that, a manual connection is provided. So that is not needed actually. Uh, sorry, that is that I am not going to basically cover in this video because uh, that is a manual operation. So all these uh, air, uh, all these nitrogen, uh, nitrogen plant is basically working in auto. We are not basically uh, going and uh, opening the walls. Nothing. We are doing nothing. It is once it is commissioned during commissioning time, all the walls are set. Then this uh, this whole nitrogen plant basically works in auto mode. Okay. So that is the uh, nitrogen generator. The first thing we have to go and we have to start or basically keep this nitrogen generator in the auto mode. Now the second thing uh, what we have to do, we have to basically uh, start the seal support system for the HP pump. So for that. Walls are provided as you can see over here. Two walls are there, so that walls are basically opened manually before uh, we start the FGSS plant. So, 10 bar nitrogen is provided over here, and we have to open this wall. This wall basically provides uh, nitrogen to the seal support system. So, this is a seal support system where the nitrogen pressure is reduced from 10 bar to at around 0.4 bar. Then, this 0.4 bar is uh, passed. Uh, in between the uh, double wall mechanical seal chamber and the outlet flow is basically monitored this is the outlet flow of the nitrogen which is passed from the uh, which is coming from the uh, chamber of this uh, hp pump double mechanical seal so double mechanical seal is there on these pumps as you can see over here over here double mechanical seal is there so this 0.4 bar nitrogen is passed through this chamber and then the outlet of this chamber is basically monitored so if any kind of leakage is there, uh, the flow in the outlet uh, outlet flow will increase and it will be detected. So mostly these uh, pumps are running in the uh, unattended condition. Basically, it's uh, it is not monitored at all the time. So if any kind of leakage is there from the mechanical seal, so that LPG will get connected in the uh, in that FGSS room. So that becomes a very dangerous condition. So to avoid that condition, this HP seal support system is uh, provided. So the pressure is basically reduced to 0.4 bar. Then 0.4 bar uh, pressure, uh, 0.4 bar nitrogen is supplied to the mechanical seal chamber, and then that uh, outlet flow is basically monitored. Outlet flow is at around 0.12 to 0.15. That 0.12 to 0.15 pressure will increase in case there is a LPG leak or basically when the mechanical seal is damage so this is how we start the hp uh, pump seal support system so basically we have to open these two walls for starting the hp pump seal support system now after the seal support system is started then we have to go and open open the walls of the nitrogen for this catch tank so this catch tank is there so basically we have to open these two walls for the uh, for supplying the nitrogen to this catch tank so basically when the system is stopped basically uh, we are always keeping these walls open but what happens sometimes uh, system uh, basically when uh, when the emergency stops or when the system is stopped in some emergency condition then what will happen these walls will get shut automatically so we have to open this wall before the system is started this is the cash tank small amount of level is maintained so this basically provides positive suction head for the hp pumps so next is the uh, cooling system for the LPG in the FGSS kit. So why basically we need this. So if you remember uh, from my previous videos that when the LPG is basically loaded at around minus 40 degrees Celsius, then what will happen? Uh, sealing oil which is there, that is basically a small amount of oil is basically leaked into the system and it is get, it gets collected in the FGSS system. And if the minus 40 degrees Celsius LPG which is bunkered in the deck tank if that LPG is directly supplied to the FGSS kit then what will happen the oil which is there in the system that will get uh, solidified 
so to avoid that a uh, cooling and heating system for the lpg is provided that basically maintains a temperature of around 34 degrees celsius uh, in the fgss kit and uh, uh, and the injection temperature this uh, this fgss kit basically maintains the injection temperature also for the lgip engine so two thing two purpose are basically fulfilled by this fgss uh, sorry this uh, glycol cooling system is that one is the it uh, maintains the temperature in the fgss kit and plus the outlet temperature for the uh, injection uh, for the engine fgss kit uh, inlet temperature for the engine uh, is maintained by this uh, cooling circuit or cooling and heating circuit you can say so to start this uh, cooling and heating circuit a sea water cooler is provided so for starting the uh, sea water cooler sea water pump is started so walls are open for this cooler and sea water pump is started so a separate cooling sea water pump was not there on my ship but it may be there on your ship so uh, the cargo cooling sea water pump which is there for the for running the cargo plant so for that pump uh, a small connection is there so we have to basically open the wall we have to uh, start the pump and open the wall so that we can uh, start this glycol sea water cooler uh, second is the heater this uh, steam heater is there so steam uh, basically boiler is all when rfa is given uh, steam uh, sufficient steam is produced by the boiler so what will happen we have to basically open these walls this is the auto control wall so this wall will open only when the when it is needed uh, we have to basically before starting we have to open this wall and this wall will be closed automatically this is basically uh, what we, uh, what to say pid control wall so we have to open only this wall and before opening this wall we have to basically uh, drain the full line otherwise a lot of hammering sound will come and it will damage because uh, this system is there on the deck and uh, the uh, boiler is there in the engine room so the piping from the uh, deck till the engine room uh, water will get condensed or steam will get con condensed and it, it, it will get accumulated in the pipes so we have to drain that water then only we have to open this wall so once these two things are set then we have to go and check the level in the header tank so uh, le header tank level is checked it has to be maintained and then we have to see the heater condition so heaters heaters are also provided onto this um, header tank and it is uh, not necessary that it is uh, it will there for uh, for for your system also like in uh, like in my system it was not there because we had this uh, separate steam heater so uh, on this heater was not there it's like suppose if you don't have this steam heater then there will be separate uh, heaters provided onto this tank so uh, basically a low level uh, low level sensor is there on this header tank so uh, we have to maintain the level above that low level then uh, we will start one of these two glycol uh, pumps so any of these pumps can be started and the uh, glycol will start uh, flow in the circuit and uh, it will basically maintain the lpg temperature to at around 34 degrees celsius so before starting the fgss skid or lpg system first we have to start this cooling circuit okay so till now we have uh, started the nitrogen generator and the cooling circuit for the fgss skid now we will go on to the deck tank for starting the lp pump so before the lp pump is started we have to change its mode from sampling mode to uh, fuel gas mode so once this uh, uh, mode is changed it is not necessary to always go and change this fuel uh, fuel gas mode because once it is changed it will always be on fuel gas mode so when it is needed for changing the mode then we can change it from here otherwise no need once only we once we have to carry out this uh, change over basically fuel, fuel gas mode has to be there for the speed control so once this uh, fuel gas mode is set then we will go on to this deck tank so first thing what we will check we have to check the level is there in the deck tank or not we have to check basically if uh, liquid is there or the lpg is there in the deck tank sufficient lpg is there in the deck tank or not if uh, sufficient lpg is there then we will go and carry out the checks on the pump so pump motor is there so we have to basically open the cover for this motor and we have to rotate this cooling fan so that uh, we can uh, check that the pump is rotating freely then there is a bearing arrangement uh, in these pumps so we have to basically check the oil for that bearing 
if uh, oil level is not there then there is a there is a uh, separate procedure for filling up the oil because this oil chamber is directly connected to the deck tank so uh, you cannot directly open uh, the open the connections and fill the oil, oil because it is directly connected to the deck tank so there is a separate procedure complicated procedure you can say so we have to check the oil and free rotation of this uh, uh, pumps uh, if these two conditions are met then we can open the walls so one wall is this one spill control by uh, spill back wall and uh, one is the discharge wall so pump uh, discharge wall is there then we can that we can open so at at one time only one pump is needed for the operation of this supply system so we will open this wall and the this wall this is the spillback con flow control wall so this uh, flow control wall ba will basically maintain the flow in the deck tank or the back flow basically uh, this is the outlet for the deck tank okay and well, like suppose the inlet uh, inlet to the FJ circuit is uh, fully shut. So once we start the pump by opening these two walls, and if this wall is not there, then what will happen? Uh, it, the whole system will get pressurized. So to avoid that, spill back control wall is there. So this basically maintains the flow of liquid in the supply system. So these two walls are open, and uh, this is always this is basically a PIT control wall. So pump is started. Any of these two pumps you can start. Any of these two walls you can open, and any of these two pumps you can start. So once the pump is started, then the LPG will start flowing in the supply circuit. As you can say, suppose this pump is started, then LPG will start flowing like this. It will go till here. It will wait here because the inlet to the FGS circuit is shut, and then from here it will go back again into the tank. So this is the supply system for this. So any of these H, uh, LP pump uh, is started and then we have to wait, wait for the flow to get settled and pressure is developed. So uh, the discharge pressure of this pump will be at around 18 to 20 bars and uh, the flow over here, the line will be almost 3 meter cube per hour. So this condition, it will take uh, of about 1 minute to get settled to these parameters. Now, uh, till now we have uh, started the deck tank. Basically, everything on deck tank is set. Now we will go in the FGSS room and we will uh, start the FGSS skid. So before starting FGSS skid, basically all the equipment in the FGSS skid, we have to see uh, this thing, catch tank bypass mode. So suppose uh, we are starting system for the first time, or suppose uh, let's say we have carried out some kind of maintenance in the uh, system FGSS kit then what will happen there won't be any kind of liquid in the catch tank and there is an interlock uh, with the catch tank level and uh, starting of the HP pumps so uh, so in this condition we won't be able to start the HP pump so there is a uh, interlock bypass is provided over here so, so this is catch tank level bypass mode so this basically if we use this thing then we can bypass this catch tank level indicator interlock with the starting of the HP pump. So if this interlock is bypassed, basically uh, it gives us one hour time. So one hour time is there in our hand. And uh, if, if within one hour, if uh, the liquid in the cash tank doesn't come, then what will happen? The system will trip and we have to start the system all over again. So if we are starting the system, when the liquid is not there in the cash tank, then we have to use this bypass mode. Otherwise, no need because once uh, everything is set for the first time, then uh, when we are going to start the FGS skid again and again, then at that time there will be there will be sufficient level in the deck tank. Sorry, not deck tank. This catch tank and uh, bypass mode is not required. So mostly when the system is commissioned at that time only this this is needed or when some kind of big maintenance is carried out on FGSS and the liquid level is not there in the catch tank, then only this mode is used. Otherwise. The system is started without even uh, without using this mode. Basically, normally this is not required, but uh, when uh, there is some problem, uh, then only we use this bypass mode. So this bypass mode basically uh, gives us one hour time. Only one hour time is there. In that, we have to uh, fill the catch tank. Now let's see the catch tank. So this over here is the catch tank. 
so i was talking about this liquid level so when we are starting this uh, fgss for the first time then this liquid won't be there and this liquid level have a interlock with the hp pump starting so we won't be able to start the system till the time liquid level is not there in the cash tank so for that purpose a bypass mode is provided so that basically bypasses this interlock for one hour and if that uh, in that period if liquid level doesn't uh, achieve is liquid level is not achieved in this cash tank then the system will trip again and we have to start the system all over again now the next thing which will uh, which we will uh, do is we will open these nitrogen walls for the cash tank so these two walls will open and a uh, pressure of around 23 bar will be maintained in the cash tank with uh, with a level of uh, above uh, this level switch now next thing we will see is the uh, seal support system so we have to open the wall for the seal support system so uh, this is the seal support system so over here we have to open these two walls to put the seal support system into operation so this will provide a nitrogen pressure of around 0.4 bar to the chamber of double mechanical seal of this hp pumps so these two hp pumps are there so uh, it will provide a nitrogen of around 0.4 bar to the chamber uh, of double mechanical seal then we have to put any of these two filters in use not both the filters but any of these two filters we have to put it in use so uh, now we will set up the line in the fgss kit for the lpg so this is the line first thing is it passes through the heater lpg heater then it passes to the pump suction so over here we have to open the walls pump suction and pump discharge similarly for the second pump also and then it passes through the cooler and then any of this filter we have to put it in use then it is supplied to the engine this is the outlet wall so this outlet wall is basically operated from the command of engine control system so basically we do not touch this wall this wall is open automatically and the return is uh, or the uh, recirculation is again uh, passed to the pump suction through this PID control wall so this is how we set up the line basically this wall these two walls or uh, and uh, this wall all these walls are controlled by the engine control system we have to open only the pump suction discharge wall and basically one or two more walls are there in the line that are that basically we have to open it manually like the filter walls so that walls we have to open it manually otherwise most of the walls are controlled from the engine control system now there is a hydraulic wall which is the inlet to the uh, fgss kit so this wall we have to open manually so once the lpg line in the fgss kit is set then only we will open this wall so once this wall is open the lpg which is uh, pressurized to at around 18 to 20 bars will will enter this fgss kit and it will fill the whole system so the whole system will be filled so once the system is filled uh, then the then uh, it is in a ready state for starting the hp pump so basically before the hp pumps are started then we uh, we have to uh, first uh, open the nitrogen for this cash tank then seal support system basically uh, we have to uh, check the cooling circuit for this uh, coolers uh, cooler and then heater cooler uh, heating circuit for the heater and then uh, set up the line then open the inlet wall for the skid then the lpg is filled in the system then this we will start any of these uh, hp pump so any of this hp pump is started so this hp pump will basically produce a pressure of around 50 bars so this uh, 50 bar pressure will be maintained in this line and uh, this wall over here will basically maintain the flow in this line at around 5 meter cube per hour so this is what is maintained so this condition will basically be maintained uh, will be take will take around uh, one minute for get for the system to get settled down so this is how what this is how we uh, basically start the fgss kit now the full uh, lpg supply system is running so basically this wall is shut this wall is open this is also shut and uh, this wall is also shut so once command from ecs will come so this wall will be open and uh, this wall will remain closed oh, sorry open and this one will remain closed till the time engine is fully started so uh, this wall will basically maintain the level in the cash tank 
so till the time the engine is fully started this will be open this will be closed and this wall will open or close depending upon the uh, level in the catch tank so once the system is basically running on dual fuel mode then what will happen this wall will shut this wall will open and the uh, lpg which is coming from the engine will be supplied back to the uh, pump suction directly instead of going to the catch tank so this is what happens in the skid so uh, now the supply system is running lpg supply system is running for the operation of dual fuel mode and the uh, main engine is also running with a minimum fuel index of 20 percent or more so at this condition basically the main engine is ready to be changed over from primary fuel to secondary fuel so as you can see over here when all the conditions are met then this uh, indicate this will indicate a ready signal so we have for starting or for changeover of this engine from uh, primary fuel to secondary fuel basically we have to press this button and then press start button so basically when we press this start button a sequence of event will take place and the engine will change over from primary fuel to secondary fuel so this over here as you can see this will gradually change from uh, blue color to a gray color so this will gradually come and uh, lpg uh, amount will increase and the primary fuel amount will decrease and that uh, primary fuel will basically uh, will basically be called as pilot fuel so pilot fuel will be 5% and the lpg will be 95% so till that time this uh, changeover will be completed so when this condition is met at that time the changeover is completed and the main engine will be running on dual fuel mode so when we press this start button so uh, many sequ uh, a sequence of event take place so that sequence of event we will uh, see in the next video because uh, it's getting uh, too long for this video so in the next video we will see the sequence of event that basically takes place when we uh, press this uh, ready uh, ready to start button or basically when we change over the system from uh, primary fuel to secondary fuel so the next step we will see next video we will see the uh, sequence of event for the start uh, one more thing friends uh, i have recently carried out or i have done a course on this lgip engine from one of the institute and they have charged, charged me around 18k just for one day in, and in one day they have uh, basically taken their they took class for around two to three hours so for two to three hours we have to pay for 18 18k or 18,000 for uh, doing this course so uh, I think uh, it's too much so please friends do support my channel and share my videos with your friends so that this can help my channel to grow so till then take care have fun